If you look at Africa, boy, the leadership in the church from Africa is strong and it's focused. I was in the Congo recently and just seeing the faith of the people because they struggle with such adversity on a day-by-day basis, boy, their faith is tested and strong and they are moving forward. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We are in the studio today in Bartlesville, Oklahoma with Paul Childers. Paul has been with us before. Uh, In fact, just a few weeks ago, his wife Susie was here with us. Paul is a part of the global eldership team at YWAM, Youth with a Mission, uh, but he likes the title Long-Term YWAMer, so we're going to go with that. How many years has it been with YWAM? I did my DTS in 1992. All right. So that's 31 years 31, this year. That's the year I yeah. got married, so I can remember that. That's 31 years ago. Paul, welcome back to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Wonderful to be here. Thank you so much, Todd. We talked with Susie when she was here, and I know you guys have just, uh, at YWAM, you've come through a bit of a transition, uh, celebrating the life of Lauren Cunningham, celebrating the legacy. Uh, Lauren was here. In fact, Lauren sat right where you're sitting. We had an interview with him, and, and we will give links to that in the show notes Talk a little bit about how Lauren finished his race, because I think it's it's pretty amazing to hear some of the stories of right till the last breath, he was the same Lauren who was passionate about the Lord, was passionate about missions, was investing in the people around him. Talk about some of the memories from his, his last days. Extraordinary. When you see a person in their last days, it really proves their life journey. And for Lauren, that was really, truly so. We were meeting with him, this global eldership team and YWAM, and on the Tuesday late afternoon, he had got the diagnosis that he had terminal lung cancer and that he had weeks to live. And you know what? The next morning, we were bright and early back at his house, continuing with our meetings. He just rolled right on. He said, you know, a lot of things have tried to kill me over my mission career. He had been ministering for 75 years. He got his calling when he was 13, and he passed at 88, and he ministered every year of his life. He said, many things have tried to kill me, but truly, this is just another one of those things. Then he lived eight months, so he confounded all the doctors, but he lived with such passion, and he got the largest vision he felt the Lord had given him, and he imparted that to YWAM passionately. Listen, he had Zoom calls to Global YWAM. He spoke more in those last eight months than ever before. When Lauren would speak, you would get an impartation. He was speaking for at least an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah. And so he's doing that three times a day with lung cancer. And he is plowing into us the importance of the Word of God and getting that into the mother tongue of every language on the earth. And he drove it home so hard. The last month of his life, he was just kind of bedridden. But he would still have people come to his bedside, and he would bless them. He addressed YWAM's uh, global leadership gathering in Thailand. He could no longer sit up in his bed even. He could only lie. And he spoke. He addressed us for 45 minutes. Wow. While lying in his While lying in his bed. bed. Wow. And he had that same sparkle in his eye. And he talked about how God had given him this picture of the stage of life that he was in and that on the horizon was eternity and it was of white light and what he described, these languages all worshiping before the throne of God. And he heard them all raising before the throne of God, but it was it looked like they came together, it sounded like they came together in just one voice. And so he has given us a big job. Yes. Uh, to put the Bible in every mother tongue on earth is an extraordinary challenge. But the good thing is, as the Lord has given us the ability, we figured out how to do it, working with the translation groups. 
and and it's happening and it's going fast in Nigeria and Nepal and in different parts of the world. What is the plan for YWAM as far as taking that vision forward and continuing until your decades of ministry, my decades of ministry are are done and it's our time to go to heaven? What's the next step for the leadership of YWAM? Lauren was intentional and not to set up structures but to impart teaching and vision. And that has been imparted not just to one or two leaders, but to thousands Mm -hmm. of YWAMers. I think we're going to see, and I'm hoping that it's all going to go well, but a whole bunch of different little Lauren Cunninghams (laughs) running around the world in Nigeria and Nepal and America, all around the world, taking this vision and running it to the very end of their race. I think, Todd, what you're going to see is the greatest impact of YWAM is yet to come. And one of the things I love about Lauren's vision was uh, the concept of from everywhere to everywhere. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a bunch of Westerners going into other countries. It was people from every nation going to every nation. Uh, And I know among your leadership team, you have people from many different nations, many parts of the world. I, I think that gives you a special blessing going forward as well. Absolutely. If you look at Africa, Boy, the leadership in the church from Africa is strong and it's focused. I was in the Congo recently and just seeing the faith of the people because they struggle with such adversity on a day by day basis. Boy, their faith is tested and strong and they are moving forward. And to see Africans go to every corner of the world, but the same with South Asians, Southeast Asians, Latins. North Americans, Americans, right? People from New Zealand, my country. And there is a real blessing and a strength and a protection in coming from all nations, going to all nations. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Paul Childers. He is a long-term YWAMer. Paul, let's talk about oral Bible translation. And I know this is something that was a passion of Lauren's, the passion that he has imparted on to you and to the rest of the leadership team. Do you see this as a... Uh, sort of a natural descendant of the Word by Heart? Because I know Word by Heart was memorizing and presenting the gospel orally, and in many cases in front of a crowd, in front of people. This to me seems like sort of Word by Heart's son or grandson. (laughs) Do do you see it that way? Yeah, and Lauren himself was intentional. It's an interesting observation. Uh, As he was speaking about oral mother tongue, he also said the Word by Heart school is, is significant to contribute towards the process of Mm -hmm. oral mother tongue. Because when people learn God's word by heart, but actually learn the story of it, the reality of it, when Jesus healed the leper, what was the expression on the face of the leper when he felt like his, his rotting flesh on his leg was suddenly healed? And you see the oozing uh, wound and then, and then just, just clean skin. And so you learn to tell a story like that. And then all of a sudden, you can share the word of God as a story, but word for word. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the key thing for oral mother tongue translations. Uh, It's oral. So you listen to it. And if you're wooden, just trying to woodenly sort of tell content, but not actually capturing the story and the punch of it, it's hard to listen to. Right. There's so, a difference between reading a script and telling a story. That's those, right. Those are two different things. But we, we tell a story with the script. Right. Right. That's just the difference. But when you feel that story and when the translator can translate as a story, then people want to listen to it. And, and that's the thing. It's also about getting people hooked on the word. And so so that's how Word by Heart is, is indeed contributes to and um, pr- sort of propels the oral mother tongue translation, yeah. Let's unpack a little bit what the process is, because I, you know, when I think of Bible translation, I think of, okay, somebody's going to move there, they're going to spend 10 to 12 years learning the language, and then learn it well enough to be able to start, okay, translating. Plus, they already had to study Greek and Hebrew so that they can go back to the original text, and and this is going to be a 25-year process, that's not what you're talking about. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Talk about the, the OMT version of getting this quickly and orally into other languages. 
the key is looking at the mother tongue speakers as the professionals because they know their language very well, much better than I do from New Zealand, even if I have a PhD in linguistics. They, oh. they understand it. It's their mother tongue. It's this intimate thing in their hearts. So we go to, for example, the tribal chief or the tribal king and ask him, would you like this? Oh, yeah, we would love this. And, and then they help direct it. So it's a community-based translation approach. And you get the community to double check the translation to make sure that it's good and it's accurate and it represents the word well. And so they come in and they'll study, say, a chapter, and then they translate it, but orally. So you have one person speaking English or whatever trade languages, and the other one translates it into their mother tongue. And you can do about a chapter a day. It's phenomenal. And then with our technology today, you strip out the English and then you just put all of the audio tracks mm -hmm. together from the mother tongue. And it's so good. Like, uh, you know, I was puzzling a bit because Paul Dungtumda, who is my partner and we do a lot in Nigeria, he started doing this. And I was like, let me listen to that. And I listened to it and I'm like, that's a story. I'm word by heart guy. I listen to stories all the time. Uh -huh. I'm like, that holds together as a story. I can feel it. It's not all sort of chopped. It's a good audio, oral translation. And so, and so they do this process, do about a chapter a day. And so they've been able to do the New Testament uh, in 30 mother tongues in six months. Wow. But the, the cool thing, Todd, is that because it's owned by the community, it's not imposed on the community. Mm -hmm. And they want it. Mm -hmm. And they all want to listen to it because it's their people that's translated the word of God for them. And this can be the challenge sometimes of translations. When we give them a Bible after 25 years, sometimes those Bibles just sit because the culture is, is a oral culture. Right. They, they listen. They're not a literary culture. They don't like to read. And so because it's oral, that speaks to their heart. You get immediate acceptance. Because it's the people doing it for themselves. And by the way, if the chief has said yes. <laughs> Everybody's on board. Everyone's on board. <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> yeah. And in, in these in these tribal hierarchical cultures, uh -huh. that's it. The chief says, boom. That's, yep. that that, that is what it is. So there's acceptance. There's engagement. People can listen to the word of God uh, immediately. And of course, there are many things that can spin off from that. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of a process of this people group owning the word of God yeah. and internalizing it deep into their culture, which is the end goal. How did, how did this come about? Uh, because it, it is a new concept. It is a new way of doing things. And it is very fast. Uh, I mean, I can see the, the people who spent 25 years translating a, a Bible translation being like, whoa, wait, whoa, how, how can you say you did 30 of these in six months? That's impossible. Talk a little bit about that. So how it came about... Uh, again, that gets back to Lauren and in his last eight months where he began deeply asking the Lord, what is the last and lasting challenge I'm going to give to YWAM? And it came to him on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So he's like, well, what's happening in heaven that's not happening on earth? So you see in Revelation, every tongue mm -hmm. will be in worship of, of the Lamb and in front of the throne, worshiping God and Jesus. And so he said, well, that needs to happen on the earth. And so that propelled Lauren to go, listen, it's really about the mother tongue. And I think in terms of how it relates to Bible translation, I mean, we're just one part of a, of there is this whole movement that's been going on in a very powerful and sustained way for generations and, and it's powerful and amazing, and we love working with them. Actually, numbers of the groups, when they heard what we were doing, came to check us out. And they were so excited. They said, this is so good. Can we use your materials? <laughs> we would like to go in this like direction. We'd to do this too. Great. Yeah. And well. it's some of, the, some of the biggest names in translation. And they're working their own processes through, of course, but this is giving a catalyst to that, but also recognizing it's not text, it's oral. Mm -hmm. It's an oral story. And so people listen to it as, you know how you listen to an audiobook. 
you're not studying every word, right? You're getting the big picture right. of what's being said. And that story then comes into your heart and sustains you. So I think it's a part of a much broader sort of category. It will be a real important catalyst for all of the work that everyone's doing. Um, we're not the whole thing, right? right? We're, we're part of a much bigger piece. But I feel like we've got a special piece. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that Lauren used his last eight months, uh, really to the very last day, to make sure that we understood. And he repeated the same thing again and again. And he was just driving it home. <laughs> it's the oral mother tongue Bible translation. Are you hearing me? Oh, yeah. This is what's important. Talk about the need for this, because uh, you mentioned in, in our chapel here at VOM this morning, 200 million people in the world speak a language that there is absolutely zero scripture translated. Not orally, not written down, zero, none, zero. That's a heartbreaking stat to me. Yeah. I mean, thinking about 200 million people who have no chance mm -hmm. of reading the Bible because it doesn't exist in their language. I mean, this is a key part of getting to that revelation, every tribe and tongue and nation. And this is something that, as you talk about 30 languages in six months, we can talk about, you know, what does that mean for 10 years from now? What does that mean for 15 years from now? We can close down that gap almost to zero, really. We, we can get it to zero and quickly. And it's because we don't have to all get PhDs. We're relying on the local people. Mm -hmm. And you know, Todd, the cool thing is they don't even have to be Christians. So I was many. wondering about that. I, I, yeah. I had that thought too. Like, are, are these people that are translating necessarily saved? Not necessarily. Not necessarily because, because they're translating it. But you know what? When they start, they go, wow. This is pretty amazing. This is so good. <laughs> and whether they be Hindu or Muslim they just get so excited because the gospel is the power of God mm -hmm. to salvation. And when they get exposed to the story, then all of the lights turn on. This one Hindu priest in South Asia says, the government needs to pay for you to do this translation work. This wow. is so important to encapsulate our language and to be a safeguard to the language going forward. And this is such an important story. And so they recognize mm -hmm. it. And so, and again, you get immediate acceptance. And people, even non-Christian people, want to join us yeah. now. So well, then if, we say, well, if yeah, the Hindu priest first. is saying how important it is, yeah. suddenly, yeah, no, no, the, the priest said we're okay. Oh, okay, well, tell me more. That, I mean, that just opens so many doors. It does. And I think, Todd, the key is, of course, all of the languages and that those 200 million people represent uh, is critical. But it's also the mother tongues. And often we call those uh, dialects. But who defines what is a dialect? My wife, Susie, who you met recently, she comes from southern Germany. And people say, oh, you speak German. No, she doesn't. She, she speaks Schwäbisch, which is a dialect of Germany that North Germans cannot understand. <laughs> so is it actually a language? Now, the whole of the church, they preach in high German. And so, like my father-in-law, for example, this is a really was really close to my heart. Uh, one day we're at the table. He sees me as the missionary, the religious professional, if you will, right in the German kind of way of thinking. And he, he asked me. He said, "Is it okay for me to pray in Schwäbisch?" Because he had only ever heard uh -huh. it in High German. Wow! But there was a distance. Now yep. he accepted the Lord in his last days, but. But he could never feel like it was his because it was through a foreign language. Mm -hmm. So when the word becomes human for people through the mother tongue, people can come home to God. And I think that's the point. And so for those 200 million, but for all of the other mother tongues that are out there, it's about coming home to God. Mm -hmm. And you can come home to God when you hear the word in the mother tongue yep. and the tongue your mom spoke to you. Yep. It's that intimate and close, and I think that's critical. I think of a brother from Central Asia we had here on VOM Radio who talked about coming to faith after seeing the Jesus film in his language, and he used these words. He said, Jesus spoke my language. Yeah, That turned the lights on for him. Wow, the, he's speaking my language. Such a crucial, such an important thing. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Paul Childers. He is a long-term YWAMer. Paul, as we finish up, we always like to equip listeners to pray. And I want to especially ask about YWAM as you are going through this season of, of kind of transition and, and passing the torch. 
how can we pray for YWAM and for you, for other leaders there, um, and for Darlene as well? Please pray for us in YWAM. I think the the point is is that we really truly understand what our part to play in this great multiplication that I talked of before. That that we would realize the part of Lauren's vision and values and heart and purpose that I can own. Uh, that we really, really want run with it. And the next generation stands up and leads forward. So that's the ultimate, right? Mm-hmm. Ultimate multiplication of the kingdom. And so pray for us that we would have that passion and purpose that Lauren had and that we would go to the very end, that we would not slack off, lose vision, lose purpose. But like Lauren, we would go to the very end, stay faithful and hopeful and purposeful to the very, very end. Uh, please do pray for Dar. Of course, it's hard, this transition. You not only lose a mate for that you've been with for 60 years, but also the leader of the mission. And, and so that the Lord would show her how to, she's a founder as well, mm-hmm. how to enable uh, that, that teaching and that leadership to go forth in YWAM and also for her health and, and her strengthening. She's 83 too, so... And she wants to travel the world. So for the ability <laughs> to do that, down. she is not slowing down. She, I visited her just a couple of days ago, and she's raring to go. Good for her. So, wow. so pray for her. I, I think specifically it's really seeing Lauren's OMT vision realized quickly. So Paul Dangtumda, please pray for him and the OMT vision in Nigeria. We want to be able to do this 300 languages within about three years. If we can do that, that'll also act as an example mm-hmm. to the mission overall. What, what, what it means to actually follow up on Lauren's last challenge to us. And truly that will set us in good stead for YWAM for generations to come. Because yeah. when you put and serve people to get the Bible in their mother tongue, you have a special place in people's hearts. And so we can share the gospel. We can obviously engage in Bible translation. We can help local churches or we can help pioneer churches where none currently exist. We can help people get training for their youth. We can help teach people how to take care of their their daily needs, food, water, clothing, shelter, health care, and so that everyone would be able to live the John 10.10 life, life to abundantly fully productive life of fulfillment in every way, spiritually, socially, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And so that that sort of summarizes our calling to get to every person in the world from YWAM. Mm-hmm. And I think doing the OMT will enable us to actually have the relational connectivity to actually see that heart played out. So it's really critical that we grab this OMT vision, we realize it, and we actually do it, and not just say, oh, wow, Lauren, so amazing guy. Wow, clap, 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 clap. Um, Okay, what next? But it's actually seeing that moving through. Mm -hmm. So please pray that we would have courage and not say, wow, it's a big job. Yeah. But no, we can do it. And we're also so grateful for Voice of the Martyrs and their partnership through the years. And all that you do for the whole body of Christ is powerful. Thank you. It is a blessing for us. If people want to know about OMT, I know there's a website. PrayOMT.org. Okay, PrayOMT.org. And we will also give you a link at VOMRadio.net. Paul Childers, thank you so much for sharing with us this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you so much, Todd, for having me. You've been listening to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. As always, you can hear this whole conversation at vomradio.net. You can also go in the archives and find our conversation with Paul's wife, Susie, just a few weeks ago and other conversations we've had with them over the last several years. Again, our website, vomradio.net. While you're there, at the bottom of the page, you can send me a note. I would love to hear that you're praying for OMT. Maybe you have are praying for a specific language as a part of that process. I would also love to hear from you how you heard about Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Uh, did, so maybe you saw it in the magazine. Maybe a friend shared it with you. Maybe you just ran into it on iTunes or on another uh, podcast app. I would love to hear how you found out about this ministry of Voice of the Martyrs. And I hope you'll be back with us next week as we continue to talk about 
what God is doing in hostile and restricted nations around the world right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.